So good afternoon, good morning. Uh, so we have a, a global audience, some are at having their breakfast, uh, some others looking already for their, uh, their after work uh, 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 glass of wine. Uh, we'll have today the, the uh, uh, seminar or we webinar about uh, life assessment of magnesium metal uh, with the uh, title uh, Carbon Footprint of Magnesium Production and its use in transport vehicles. And it will be presented uh, by Simone Ehrenberger. Simone is a researcher at the uh, German Aerospace Center at the Institute of uh, Vehicle Concepts. Uh, Simone is, well, is a well-known expert in the world of uh, life cycle uh, assessment and uh, was also the author of the first LCA study, which has been initiated by the IMA back in 2013. Uh, my name is Martin Tauber and I'm the European representative of the IMA and, uh, and the IMA is hosting and uh, uh, organizing this webinar today. Uh, I'm very pleased also to, because we are global uh, associations, so I'm pleased to welcome also uh, Rick McCarthy, our uh, president, uh, Ken White, uh, the European uh, chairman, uh, Lee Helgen, our executive vice president of the uh, IMA, and Paul Ugioni, uh, the uh, American representative as well. So well, welcome to you all. Uh, some words to the IMA. The IMA was found in 1943 and uh, is a, a global organization promoting uh, magnesium and, uh, and, and encourage uh, uh, innovative application and uh, supporting and, and uh, material uh, selection in the in the industry. Uh, the IMA consists of a wide range of uh, members, beginning with primary producers, uh, recyclers, uh, all kind of foundries, tier one, tier tier two companies, uh, end users, uh, suppliers, and machinery producers, but also institutes and uh, universities. Uh, some housekeeping to the uh, the webinar. As I said, this is set up as a Zoom presentation. Everybody is uh, uh, a participant with camera and microphone. Uh, I think it's better to mute the microphone during the presentation. Uh, the presentation will take about 30 to 35 minutes. Uh, and after that, uh, we can uh, we can make a quick Q&A. &A. Uh, but the time is scheduled for maximum of, uh, one hour. Uh, the webinar is recorded and uh, can be available, will be available accessible for everybody uh, on the IMA uh, website. We await about uh, four, 50 to 60 participants. I saw now the, the counter is at 45 and uh, we look forward for an exciting and useful event. Uh, the, the study presented uh, was initiated in 2019 and uh, published uh, in 2020 by DLR, uh, including an external independent accreditation by a German company uh, called DECRA. And also the IMA uh, has organized uh, and uh, has organized an, a global advisory board uh, which are also named in the study. Uh, within the global range of uh, CO2 targets by legislators and also the, the different industries, uh, CO2 footprint information of products, uh, processes, but also raw materials becoming very important and also decisive uh, the process of material selection. And uh, in our view, it's very uh, important to have uh, uh, magnesium primary and secondary process in information and uh, the right and valuable information in engineering and LCA databases like Gabi and uh, EcoInvent. And uh, as you see more and more that complete LCA uh, uh, assessment of uh, complete vehicles are, are done, uh, then it's, uh, it's very important that uh, the, the engineers or some are doing this assessment have access to uh, reliable data of the different uh, materials. 
Uh, within this updated study, we are convinced uh, that we are providing this updated set of data for the current uh, magnesium primary production, which takes uh, place uh, mostly in China. But we also uh, 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 show some alternatives uh, around the world and uh, uh, including some promises, uh, prom promising projects uh, in planning stage uh, uh, are also included in, in the study. And with this short info intro, I'm handing over to uh, you, Simon. Thank you. Hello, everybody. A warm welcome also from my side. I will share my screen now so that you can see the slides of this webinar. So now you should see my presentation. I will give you an overview of the study we did last year. And first I want to give you a brief introduction in why we are doing this kind of analysis and also some background information. And then I will um, present the, yeah, the methodology and also the results of course of the work that we did. So um, as you know, the um, transport is subject of various um, strategies and regulations that have the goal to decrease um, emissions, both greenhouse gas emissions as well as local emissions. Of course, the drivetrain is in focus. There are several technologies that came into the market in the past years and a huge um, an effort is taken to really bring a change into the vehicle market in the upcoming future. And uh, this does not only affect the uh, um, drive trends, but also the materials that are used and um, not only the operation emissions are in focus, but also the emissions of the um, production of materials and energy and fuels um, in terms of bringing it to a CO2 free production. And um, within the German Aerospace Center, we are also working on this um, transport technologies. So you might wonder why the Aerospace Center here is um, dealing with that. So um, transport is one of the six um, research areas within the German Aerospace Center. And um, we are working on the transport system as such, as well as on rail vehicles and road vehicles. And we are also covering, of course, the main technology trends that we have nowadays. This is um, optimization, um, yeah, data analysis, sector coupling, electrification, and um, of course, the decarbonization is one of the major goals. I work with the Institute of Vehicle Concepts that is part of the German Aerospace Center's um, transport research area. Our goals are, of course, to um, work on a sustainable economical um, transport system. And my colleagues are working on road vehicles as well as, as, well as railway vehicle concepts. And I'm part of the um, of the department working on VX systems and technologies assessment, and I'm responsible for the group technology assessment of road vehicles. And within my work, we also did the study that was commissioned by IMA. We already did a study a couple of years ago that was published in 2013. And um, this is still available on the IMA website, by the way. So what we did there was we um, analyzed the use of magnesium for transport applications. And um, as you know, the uh, dominant um, Magnesium supply is a Chinese 
pigeon process that has been yeah, dominated the market in the past 20 years. Nowadays, about 85% of the magnesium comes from this pigeon process in China. And um, almost 10 years ago, we did a broad analysis of the uh, energy and material consumption of this um, process. And we uh, made a life cycle assessment covering the greenhouse gas emissions as well as acidification and other environmental um, burdens. Um, the main result was that we uh, um, developed a model for the average rated CO2 emissions and the, um, yeah, the emissions were about 26 kilogram per kilogram magnesium. And um, of course, it turned out that ferrosilicon contributes considerably to the overall impact. Additionally, to this analysis, we also um, conducted a um, assessment of the electrolysis production in Israel, which um, yeah is still um, up to date. So we did not um, cover the electrolysis in this update. Um, in the study in 2013, we further analyzed the end of life of magnesium and possible recycling pathways, as well as the use of magnesium for a um, automotive part that was a steering wheel and an aircraft part. In the updated study, the main focus was to uh, analyze the carbon dioxide and greenhouse gas emissions of the current magnesium production in China and mainly uh, the update of the data on the pigeon process. Um, in the past study, uh, it turned out that about 60% of the emissions stem from the energy supply. So this was also the focus of this um, study last year that we wanted to look um, on the actual energy consumption and also the source of energy for the pigeon process. Additionally, we added a, um, information and results for, the, for a path for the production of secondary magnesium. And um, we also had a look into the uh, magnesium recycling efficiency based on an IME re report of uh, 2017. Um, as the last part of this study, we analyzed the use of magnesium for a passenger car and an aircraft component in order to show um, the influence of the different production pathways in the overall balance of greenhouse gases. So we only focus on greenhouse gases. Uh, we did not touch other um, environmental indicators. And um, last but not least, a very important thing is that, of course, we uh, did an external review of the LCA according to the ISO standard. So um, the study and the methodology uh, was approved in the end by this external reviewer. Concerning the pigeon process, um, we made a survey in China with um, some magnesium producers. Our original plan was to um, do a research similar to the first study that is traveling to China and doing interviews and also um, in interviewing the colleagues of the Chinese Magnesium Association. Unfortunately, that was not possible in the year 2020. So uh, we made a questionnaire that we sent to um, CMA and um, CMA, they surveyed uh, magnesium producers in China and we got the data back in the end. And um, concerning the energy consumption, what we have seen is that there were um, differences compared to the 
data of the former study. Um, as you might know, there are different gases used for the pigeon process. That is coke oven gas, the um, semi-coke oven gas, producer gas, and natural gas. And of course, we need a additional electricity for the process. Here in the um, bottom uh, upper corner, you can see the different uh, steps of the pigeon process. These steps are described and also in the form study. So if you're interested, you can um, read the single uh, process characteristics there. And what we did now is um, for every step of this pigeon process, we updated the information on um, material and also on energy use. And um, as you can see here, there have been improvements in energy efficiency more than in material efficiency. And um, most of these um, process steps um, save energy. Um, in terms of electricity, there has a shift between the processes. Uh, the, the reason for that is that there are um, several requirements, legal requirements um, that came to the producers. So they had to make some installations for uh, emission reduction and that yeah, ended up in some increase in um, electricity consumption while for other process steps um, they saved electricity and in the end <clears throat> the overall electricity consumption is more or less constant for the um, pigeon process. A second effect that is um, quite important is the share of um, energy gases that are used for the uh, um, overall pigeon process productions in China. So um, this is determined by the production volume for um, the companies and each of the company uses a different um, kind of gas and that yeah, ends up in a certain ratio uh, in terms of the magnesium production volume in the end. And as you can see, um, there has a shift uh, or there is a shift from um, coke oven gas to um, other gases, semi-coke oven gas in, uh, increased and um, producer gas also decreased, natural gas remains more or less constant. And the effect of this is that this also affects the overall average energy consumption and CO2 intensity because um, the use of the different gases also has an effect of uh, the CO2 intensity itself as they have like um, different characteristics, different heating values and so on. Now, um, we uh, modeled the pigeon process again with the new data. And as you can see um, here in this graph, this is the CO2 equivalence per kilogram magnesium. And um, ferrosilicon itself as a process material has a huge influence in the overall emissions of the pigeon process. And um, within this update, we also took the chance to have a look into the ferrous silicon production, although this is not the focus of this magnesium analysis. We decided to update um, the data on ferrous silicon supply as well, that affects um, the energy mix in China used for the ferrous silicon production as well as the direct emissions during the ferrosilicon um, production. And yeah, so we adjusted the data and um, in the end, we found that 12.5 uh, um, kilogram CO2 equivalent emissions only come from the ferrosilicon production and um, the overall 
average production then in the end is about 22 kilograms when crediting the use of um, certain gases that are used for the pigeon process. The background for that is that um, coke oven and semi-coke oven gas are seen as a waste product of coke production and are given for free to the magnesium um, producers. So um, we uh, allocated the use, or, yeah, the, the use of these waste gases to the coke production and then, um, yeah, subtracted this because we allocated it to another um, industrial process. So um, uh, the, uh, this is um, the result that is shown here, the 22 kilograms. If you don't give this allocation credits, then you will end up at, um, yeah, six uh, kilograms more CO2 equivalent. Um, emissions and compared to the uh, 2013 study, uh, we observe a reduction of the overall emissions, though it's not um, substantial. So I would say there are still potentials, um, but in terms of energy efficiency, of course, this um, depends on the uh, actual gases that are used. So there has to be take place a shift from certain gases to let's say natural gas in order to gain more um, reduction in CO2 emissions. The pigeon process itself without the uh, um, materials like ferrosilicon fluoride and so on uh, results in a 12.1 kilogram CO2 um, CO2 equivalent per kilogram magnesium as a yeah, gate to gate process. Apart from the pigeon process, there are several alternative processes in the world. Some of them are already in an industrial level for several years. Uh, one is, of course, the natural gas based electrolysis that has been analyzed in the former study. Another example is um, the RIMA process in Brazil. There has been a study on this process um, like 10 years ago, which results here in about 10 kilograms of CO2 equivalents per kilogram magnesium, which includes a uh, credit for the use of biomass in this um, thermal reduction process. A couple of years ago, there has been um, built a uh, pigeon process plant in uh, central Turkey that shows more or less the same um, range of emissions than um, the, as the pigeon process plants in China. And uh, last but not least, there is another project in, in China where a electrolysis plant is built. And um, this is, uh, yeah, this plant is um, nearby another um, site and uses uh, waste products. Um, or, and the, yeah, the special thing in this plant is also that um, compared to the electrolysis here in Israel, it uses a higher share of renewable energy, mostly uh, water power. And that is the reason why there is such a difference between those two electrolysis plants. And um, yeah, compared to the other alternatives on industrial level, this um, plant has the lowest CO2 emissions but um, of course we have to state that it's still in its ramp up phase and therefore the current greenhouse gas balance in 2019 or 20 could also show higher emissions because this calculations is based on a like a full volume production and not um, automatically valid, valid for the ramp up phase. 
And there are other um, plans in, in a pilot level. And um, in the past years, the criteria of yeah, um, saving energy and also saving emissions has become more and more important. And uh, one strategy of achieving this, of course, is um, having a high share of renewable energy or also um, using waste of other industry processes as raw materials. And here are two examples where um, information on LCA results is available. One is uh, the Alliance Magnesium Process in Canada, an ele electrolytic process. And another one is the Latrobe Process in Australia, which is also a thermal redu reduction. And there also byproducts can be used for other applications and by allocating these um, byproduct emissions, you also end up with um, less than 10 kilograms of CO2 emissions per kilogram of magnesium. So this is um, the overview of the current magnesium production. Um, like in the study that we did before, we also had a look into the magnesium recycling and in this um, study last year, especially on the production of secondary magnesium. So there is, of course, an established um, production path of recovering magnesium from um, production scrap, which could also um, be used for end-of-life scrap. And um, by, re by using this material, you can save a lot of um, emissions, of course. So here, this um, result applies for two plants by, that are run by Magontech, one in Germany and the other in Romania. And uh, we use average country uh, electricity mixes to uh, model the process. And as you can see here, an, uh, per kilogram magnesium alloy basis, um, of course, the emissions are much lower, less than one kilogram CO2 equivalents per kilogram magnesium. Um, this is without the transportation uh, of the material. This, of course, depends on where you want to transport it and yeah, needs to be added up to that. Um, additionally, to this analysis of the secondary magnesium within the LCA study, we also analyzed the uh, um, efficiency of um, end of life scrap usage and um, used the new numbers for our um, example calculations of um, magnesium products and transport ap applications. So this is um, the last part of our study. It's um, the magnesium use. One example is a cross car beam for a passenger car. And the second um, example um, I will explain in the end is for an aircraft part. So um, the cross car beam is um, yeah, an, an ex existing example, which weighs four kilograms and is made from an AM50 alloy. And this part is um, compared to an aluminium um, part, like the same part made of aluminium, um, which weighs um, 5.4 kilograms. And here in this table, you can see the settings for our comparison. So uh, the weight, of course, is an important feature. And um, for the use phase of this um, passenger car, we applied a mileage of 200,000 kilometers for both parts. And we used a fuel reduction coefficient um, that 
is valid for a gasoline car. So in literature, you will find um, he has a lot of information on um, the um, effect of energy savings in a passenger car. There is publications on yeah, generic modeling approaches um, based on yeah, the resistance equations of the vehicles. And there are also other publications based on statistical methods for the mass and use fuel consumption. And of course, these coefficients um, yeah, depend on the type of vehicle and then the driving cycle and so on. So for hybrid or electric vehicles, um, the energy savings would be lower compared to an ICE vehicle. In this example, we are still like wanted to reflect the current situation and yeah, use this fuel reduction coefficient which is also used in the former study. So uh, we can directly compare the results to our former results. Um, what has changed is, what I just explained, is the material recycling efficiency at the end of um, life, which turned out to be uh, lower for the magnesium part compared to the aluminum component. So using um, this information about the components, we calculated the CO2 equivalents per component per um, vehicle part. And here for the aluminum, we took as the reference the um, um, aluminum used in Europe mix. So this is, is um, not the CO2 emissions of the aluminum European production mix, but the material that is used in Europe. And um, for the magnesium, we used uh, different pathways. As you can see here, the magnesium average work reflects more or less um, the Chinese pigeon process because 85% um, is made of um, the pigeon process. So this is very similar, of course. Then um, we have the electrolysis process in China with the lowest uh, CO2 emissions in the production. And um, we uh, took a pitch in the lowest CO2 emission um, case, kind of the best case for the pigeon process here for, um, for comparison. And For the um, assessment of the vehicle part, of course, we do not only consider the um, production, we need to uh, consider the entire life cycle of this component. So here um, you can see the savings from, from the use phase. They are independent from the source of material, of course. And they are depicted here in terms of like difference to aluminum. So the zero line is the aluminum part and we save energy by using a lighter part in the passenger car, in this case, the magnesium part. So we have a certain um, energy and emission saving. We also um, need to process less material during the vehicle end of life that leads to some um, savings also in the end of life. And we also have some credits for the use of post-consumer scrap, which also um, is a bit yeah, better for the, in the magnesium case. But of course, for um, most of the aluminum, uh, for the magnesium pathways, we have a higher emission compared to aluminum in the production phase. And this, oh, yeah definitely depends on the source of the magnesium. And when we sum up these um, differences, we see that we can gain an advantage for the magnesium part with this, um, within this example um, for the um, yeah, low carbon intensive um, production pathways for magnesium, this emission saving is considerable. For the 
pigeon process, it's comparable to the aluminium reference, I would say. Um, and yeah, this, as I said before, this is um, valid for the use case of the vehicle for 200,000 kilometers. Of course, if I drive more or less, these um, values will change. Additionally, to the passenger car part, we considered an aircraft part or um, two aircraft part. So um, they are used in, a, in an aircraft door. And it's actually the same examples that we used in the study that we did in 2013. So here, again, the characteristics of these parts, they um, have a weight um, saving for the magnesium parts um, by, of 22%. And uh, we used a DLR model for aircrafts with a certain setting for a medium haul aircraft and a certain flying distance and fuel saving per flight in order to calculate the CO2 emission savings. So um, this is valid for this setting. Um, but as the um, energy consumption of air aircrafts during operation is so high, the actual production is not as relevant as in the passenger car example. So as you can see here, there are only, uh, um, yeah, there is a high, um, CO2 emissions um, during the production, or, well, it is high, but it is much lower compared to uh, the uh, um, operation emissions. So although I have higher emissions for the pigeon process here compared to the uh, aluminum used uh, in Europe, it is not that relevant compared to the operation um, emissions. So um, when, I, when you calculate the number of flights, we uh, come out with like about five to 10 flights for compensating the higher emissions. And um, yeah, yeah conclusion is like, as we already stated before, that um, as the emissions of the operation phase are so high, it definitely makes sense to use um, light materials in the uh, um, aircraft sector. And here you can see when we compare it to the aluminum world mix, there isn't even a high difference here or most of the um, banks and pathways come up with um, lower CO2 emissions compared to this aluminum world mix. So to conclude for the overall study, um, we have seen that we could reduce the uh, magnesium production emissions in the uh, um, of the pigeon process compared to the 2011 numbers that have been published in 2013. Um, but there are further reductions possible, um, especially uh, for the ferrosilicon uh, material. One possibility is, of course, to use um, less ferrosilicon, um, but also the ferrosilicon production itself could uh, reduce the uh, emissions by using um, alternative energy or renewable energy. Um, concerning the alternative processes of magnesium production, um, we have seen that the uh, electricity uh, in uh, a plant in China has a potential to reduce um, the impacts uh, when it comes into full production. And um, also there are the other material or the other processes of um, magnesium that intend to come into the market have the potential to reduce the average magnesium emissions further. 
In terms of magnesium recycling and secondary material, um, the use of this kind of material is, is critical. So there are established pathways both for the aluminium and the magnesium. Um, what I want to point out here is that it's really important to uh, focus on the end of life uh, scrap because um, if I use production scrap, um, this is also important, of course, but in the end for the cradle to grave analysis, it adds up to the emissions and the uh, really environmental benefits come from the use of, of end of life scrap. So um, there is still a potential to increase this share also for the magnesium parts. For the use of transport, as we have just seen, um, this depends highly on the settings of the, of the analysis and of the model. So in the case that we considered, uh, magnesium uh, gains benefits in terms of greenhouse gas emissions. Um, but there are factors like the fuel reduction coefficients and also the aluminum mix that is used for comparison that uh, determine the overall result. And yeah, in, in terms of uh, generalized statements, this really makes it difficult to state uh, which lightweight material would be better in the end because this is really a case specific and case dependent. At least for the passenger cars, um, for the aircraft parts, we have seen that it really makes sense to use lighter materials and that there is a huge potential of saving emissions in the overall life cycle. So this is um, the main results of our study. If you have any questions, please um, feel free to ask. Uh, I will stop the screen sharing now. Uh, I think Simone, it's good if you, if you leave your screen on probably okay. if you have questions mm -hmm. to refer to, to slides or something. Okay. Uh, yeah. thank, thank, uh, thank you very much. It was very uh, comprehensive. Uh, very understandable uh, to present uh, such a, 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 a technical topic in a, in a, in a very short short uh, time. Uh, and I think you, you said it at, at the beginning, at, at, the, at the end, uh, there are, uh, there's a lot of homework still to do uh, in the LCA field. Uh, the aim of the IMA is not to, to, to promote here that, that magnesium is the best material in, in all the cases. Uh, but what, what, what we are trying to establish is a reliable information that the industry can, can uh, take uh, 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 material uh, the, the decisions with the right data for magnesium uh, as well. Uh, with this, I think, uh, with the setup we have at Zoom, everybody can unmute uh, the microphone. And if you have a question, please... Uh, 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 let let us know now and introduce yourself at the beginning as well. Yeah, so Martin, can I ask the first question? Sure. Hi, uh, this is Alan Law from Ohio State University. Uh, this is a very nice update from the 2011 study or 2013, as you call it. Uh, it's a good update. Uh, my only question or suggestion is, uh, do you have any plan to extend the comparison beyond just uh, with aluminum, because uh, magnesium is competing with steel, plastics, carbon fiber composites in many cases. Aluminum obviously is a major competing or competitor, uh, but do you have uh, uh, plans or data to compare with other materials? Um, we did a comparison with a steel component in a publication mm -hmm. a couple of years ago. So I have the data, of course, for steel as well, and also for, for, other, um, for other materials. Um, carbon fiber is a bit difficult there 
Now, I think last or two years ago, there have been um, data published on carbon fiber production. Um, but of course, uh, you need like, I mean, you can, can compare the, the materials, but it is very dependent of the parts and of the design right. of the parts, like what is the overall um, balance in the end. So, um, but at least the, from production standpoint, can you, uh, you know, compare the data like, uh, you know, kilograms of CO2 uh, for carbon fiber production, uh, carbon fiber based composite production, because the molding process yes. is also energy intensive and all of that. Yes, and there is a graph in the in this study. Um, okay. I don't know the, the number of the figure, but <laughs> there is a, a graph where I compared um, the materials on a per kilogram basis and on a let's say assumed weight saving um, basis. But this weight saving potential depends on the specific part. Those it's not that easy All to right. state, but. Yeah, there, there is a graph. I don't have it in the slides now, but if you have a look into the, the study report, mm -hmm. you will find a graph on that too. Okay, all right, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Alan. Uh, some more questions from, uh, from the audience. Uh, we have a, a couple of guests uh, as well in, in the presentation. So uh, if you would like to leave some feedback for us or particular questions, uh, what do you look for when you search for magnesium? Uh, May I uh, make some comments to the slide with uh, aerospace components, the Ilya Ostrovsky from Shemetal. Can you please uh, show again the slide with hinge and end gate? Um, this one? No, this, uh, yeah, uh, this, uh, this is just common. This, uh, this no powder coating here is uh, epoxy primer and uh, wet primer and uh, two types of, uh, it means one, type, one top coat on the hinge and two types of top coat on the end gate. And uh, the curing is done in room temperature, so there's no any energy like in powder coating in this case. Okay. Yeah, just just comment for this. Yeah, of course, it's, yeah. uh, this okay, anodizing yeah, think... anodizing process what requires yeah. some energy, of course, but uh, not for, but not for paint. The painting is uh, uh, this normal aerospace wet paint. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I I just used the information that we had. No, this is this, this, this wrong. This wrong information. This uh, this okay. specification for this uh, for both parts. Of uh, OEM and is uh, only with paint is specified. Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay. Right. Hi, this is uh, Jerry Wang from Meridian Lightweight Technologies. Um, thank you for the good information. I just have one uh, question regarding the uh, CCB production. Um, in your calculation of the energy and CO two emission. Um, how uh, did you consider the uh, recycled magnesium being used and uh, what uh, percentage did you use? Thank you. Um, <clears throat> that's a good question. Well, for this example, we used um, primary material for the calculation and then we used this a material recovery factor and gave credits for the recovery of these materials. So we do, did not um, give the, let's say, credit of the secondary material use in the beginning of the, um, of this life cycle, but uh, we credited in, in the end saying, um, that it could also be used for other magnesium or aluminum applications and not specifically for the automotive part. Yeah, it's, it's Gary, it, it's, uh, it's, uh, uh, it's a question of the study bound, uh, boundaries, uh, what, what you said. And uh, we have seen some uh, recent examples, for instance, from uh, vehicle, complete vehicle, vehicle life cycle analysis 
from uh, from Polestar 2, for instance, where uh, they set their star, uh, their assessment boundaries in uh, in in uh, the, they don't use any figure for uh, recycling materials. So to be on the safe side, they only uh, take a primary in, into consideration, and if they have no data about processing, they take uh, the same amount of CO2 for the uh, uh, for the production or for the raw material as for the processes uh, for the for, for for the following processes. So every uh, everybody's modeling kind of their own uh, system boundaries where they feel comfortable in. So, but but I think it will be a lot more beneficial when we when we take, of course, as higher the recycling rate you are a recycling material you use, as better it it will be. Yeah, I assume uh, in both cases, you're assuming the primary material for magnesium and aluminum in this study. Yes, right. Yeah. Right. My, my comment is uh, with uh, more magnesium being used, this is 66 end of life rate may go up, right? Because currently mm -hmm. it's not recycled to the full amount, like 95% with aluminum. But if uh, the volume is higher, uh, that number eventually is going up. Yes. Yes, I think so. And um, and uh, yeah, concerning or regarding the uh, amount of secondary material used, it's really difficult also to to see whether it's um, where this secondary material comes from, whether it's end of life material or only like production um, scrap material. And this also, of course, influences the overall balance and. Yeah, th there is um, little statistics on that, and this is really difficult to state for, a, let's say, a generic example like this. Okay, any, any more questions? No. Okay, if there are not uh, not more questions, uh, I I use the time for a couple of announcements uh, as well. Uh, of course, all the, the information you have seen uh, and the uh, the study also and an, a summary is available on the on the IMA website as well. The recording which will be available in in a few days. Uh, the next presentation uh, we have on LCA of magnesium, if you're interested, will be during the Werkstoff Auto Plus uh, online conference uh, uh, from DLR on the 24th and 25th of uh, Fe February. Uh, the uh, participation uh, fee is, is, uh, is free this year because it's an online conference. And uh, uh, our presentation on uh, magnesium LCA is uh, scheduled somewhere at the afternoon at uh, 20 past 2 CET on the 24th. So uh, I can invite you to that as well. I may will have uh, an uh, online uh, exhibition stand, a virtual stand as well, so that you can also access uh, information about uh, magnesium. Uh, the next webinar we are planning is on the 23rd of March, uh, and it will be about uh, magnesium and additive manufacturing, 3D printing. Uh, and uh, you, you will get uh, information, uh, invitations on that, and you will see announcements uh, both from IMA and uh, in social media as well. Uh, I think uh, the last announcement I want to make is about the uh, international conference, uh, the World Conference of, of, of IMA, uh, which take place normally in uh, May uh, this year. It is scheduled for uh, August uh, the 25th uh, till the 27th uh, and should uh, is supposed to take place in Japan. And uh, I think uh, monitoring the circumstances and everything what's going on today uh, I may will will make uh, an, an announcement if that is taking place in as a personal conference a hybrid conference or an online conference uh, 
with that, uh, I, 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 I leave you to it. Uh, thank you very much for uh, participation. Uh, I hope we provided uh, useful information to you and uh, keep safe and healthy and uh, see you next time. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Wonderful presentation.